Hey guys, welcome back to Daniel's Tech World here on YouTube. My name is Daniel Rosell. This is my little tech corner of YouTube. Today we're going to be looking at the different uh, types of optical storage, optical media on the market in Feb 2024, organized by storage. Uh, just to make the disclaimer that this is, uh, you know, there's always a chance that I miss some stuff. Uh, we are looking at some pretty obscure products here. And if there are other ones that I forgot to include, please shout out. But my main focus here is on looking at the ones that are viable options for data storage in the year 2024. If you do choose to go down the optical media uh, route for backup and archive. So basically there's two form factors in optical media. There's eight centimeters and 12 centimeters in digital optical media, I should say. Um, and there's one deprecated form factor, which was the bootable business card, which was kind of like a variant on the, they kind of took the mini CD and made it square. And it was like kind of a conference gimmick for a while. It was pretty, uh, pretty funny. So these mini CDs, obviously the vast majority of stuff on the market is full size CDs. These are 12 centimeters and their internal diameter is uh, 1.5 centimeters or 15 centimeters. Um, I know that because I'm doing a little DIY project to make my own storage for these. Uh, the mini CDs, uh, you can find them blank. I'll show you guys what the options are. Um, but uh, they don't require a different CD and DVD writer. I got that wrong before. Uh, I thought just there was actually a product called Mini CD Burner, and I thought that meant it was a burner for mini CDs, but it was just a smaller CD burner. Uh, so these can be read, written and read in regular uh, drives. You just they have little grooves for the mini ones. Um, so yeah, they're they're used kind of for by hardware manufacturers to distribute drivers, but you can get the blank media. I just got some recently uh, from China to have, I'm building up a little kind of like, I guess you could say collection of optical media. So the mini ones are um, 215 megabytes they can hold each. Um, and you can buy them in like 50 packs from China and you can put whatever you want in them. Um, to the best of my knowledge in the world of mini stuff like mini CDs and mini DVDs, because it's much more obscure, no one's really kind of tried to make these archival grade ones in this product in this product category. So I would imagine these media aren't particularly durable, but they do exist. So within mini DVDs, uh, they do exist, and uh, they ha there are both single and dual layer and the layering technology we'll see in this video is when they put different layers into the optical media but they also have dual side which is an older technology that they put it on both sides of the media and there's kind of like a b side that you have to flip over so intriguingly enough in the world of mini dvds they made them in both single side single layer um double side single layer single side double layer and double side double layer uh, which would have got us up to a capacity of, I think, 5.32. Um, in terms of here, here's some, here's some of the kind of old school products, just to show you guys what they looked like um, back in the day. Um, we can see here there's a DVD RAM, uh, which I think was the main format because these were really used in camcorders. Um, and these were supposed to be, what's it, the, the difference between a DVD RAM and a DVD RW is that as far as I know, these could be rewritten for a very, very large amount of times, like up to, I think it was like a thousand or something. Anyway, I'm not an expert, but just thought I'd include these for their historical, as a historical note. Uh, these were 9.4 gigabyte double-sided DVD RAMs. I'm not sure these ones are mini. On, from verbatim, but these ones were uh, were were mini. Anyway, these are all in. This is all in the realm of kind of products of of of, of yesteryear. So this is uh, just a regular uh, mini uh, DVD R that you can find there. It's uh, fifty packs, one point four gigabytes. So anyway, just for the sake of thoroughness, I just wanted to point out that this kind of uh, old uh, mini mini media exists. But going back into the the main categories that we have on the market today in the full size. So this is the twelve centimeter full size CD. Now you might have thought to yourself, haven't I seen CDs in 700 megabytes and also 650? And the answer is yes, you're not going crazy. They actually exist in both, uh, which is unusual for the optical media standards and that usually the capacity is kind of defined in what they call the blue books, the definition books. Uh, but for CDs, um, it's 650 and then the 700, obviously we're only talking about an extra 50 megabytes. And basically they just record a little bit uh, they put the recording die a little bit further towards the disc edge. Um, there was this thing called double density CDs, DDCDs, and they got the CD up to 1.3 gigs, uh, but 
then blue then DVD came on the market and this became irrelevant. So this is basically what's what regular C, uh, CDs are. And if you're looking for archival stuff, and that's really the focus of this channel, um, there are there have been a few different archival CD products over the years. They tend to use a gold layer and tended to slow down corrosion. Verbatim make one here on the right and Delkin devices and there's a few other manufacturers and they're pretty awesome. I bought a couple actually just to maybe put in a little sort of framing projects I want to do. Um, but personally for archival, nothing but Blu-ray really makes much sense, I think. So within DVDs on the regular uh, regular form factor, the full 12 centimeters. So there's two on the market. Um, there is uh, commonly on the market, I should say, there is a the standard DVD is 4.7 gigs and the double layer, which is a a double layering technology, two layer, two recording layers uh, in in the media, is eight point five, and these are all single sided to 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 use that very very old uh, form of reference. Um, so these both uh, exist, but there are actually a couple of um, very there were a couple of odd oddities that were kind of. Uh, put out there and I couldn't find any of these manufactured but if you have photos or links to actual products it's always interesting to see that these were made so there was a 9.4 gig one that was double-sided single layer that was called DVD 10 in the specification and there was a, a double-sided double layer so actually four layers within one DVD that got the capacity up to 17.8 gigs it was called DVD 18 in the specification but like in the in the realm of CDs by the time that the manufacturers were playing around with more and more elaborate and slightly ridiculous ways of increasing the capacity, uh, a new laser technology came along. In this case, it was a Blu-ray to supplant that. So in Blu-rays, we have uh, one, two, three, four different uh, capacities that are on the market. Uh, there have been different capacities prototyped uh, that never made it to market um, by, I think, uh, was it Panasonic? No, Pioneer. Pioneer did a prototype 200 gigabytes. So it's possible technically to store more than this and photo optonics are working on the terabyte one but this is just what you can buy on the market 25 gigs a single layer 50 gig dvds is called dual layer and that's uh, the acronym there is bddl um, and then bdxl is used to refer to two categories of discs you have the 100 gigabytes and these are tri-layer um, although I have seen a, a 100 gig that was made of four layers of 25, but the standard today is uh, 33 gigabytes and three recording layers. And that acronym is BDTL. And then for the big ones, the 128 gigabytes, these are also called BDXL. And that is, it's a quad layer disc. It's uh, four layers of 32 gigabytes each. And the acronym there is BDQL, B blu-ray disc quadruple layer uh, just to say for the last two things of these the bdxl discs and um, there's only only sony make the 128 ones but there's a few manufacturers of the 100 gigs so if you're looking for those higher capacity ones it's worth checking the specs a spec sheet this is the spec sheet for uh my uh, new pioneer uh, burner and you can see under the list here we have bdr TL slash QL, that stands for triple layer slash quadruple layer. So uh, they have a max read and write speed, so I know it's supported. And they actually have different ones for the M disk as well. Uh, the M disk um, does have a 100 gigabyte uh, product, uh, but there there's no uh, quad layer 128 gigabyte one because there's only one disk of the capacity in the market uh, by Sony. So just to round out a couple of uh, weird products that are just out there uh, just just as i said for for for, com for the sake of thoroughness yeah someone did actually try to do a mini blu-ray there is actually one written in the specification i found these maxell discs uh they are 7.5 gigs and you can see it's the same eight centimeter form factor but with the blu-ray laser and uh, there was one as well that they uh, they attempted to do. It was going to be called the Intra Hybrid Blu-ray Disc, uh, and it was going to be one rec one rewritable layer and one um, like uh, fixed layer. Uh, and I think they like the this is just an, an old press release from the Blu-ray Disc Association. They thought that it was going to be 
you know, you could uh, have your critical data on one layer of the disk and you could write stuff again on another layer. Uh, it seems like a very, very weird idea. And I guess that's perhaps why, to the best of my knowledge, there was never an intra-hybrid Blu-ray disc IHBD brought to commercialization. I hope this was interesting, this little uh, nugget, these little nuggets from the history of optical media. Uh, I would just really kind of highlight this slide. There's four types of Blu-rays on the market today, 25, 50, 100, and 128. And uh, the 100 is BDTL, uh, Blu-ray triple layer, and the 128 is Blu-ray quad layer, uh, BDQL. And if you are looking to use these higher discs for your archival purposes, uh, make sure before you buy a drive or a reader that uh, it can support it and that uh, you should be able to find that information in the spec sheet. Thanks for watching. Until the next video.